welcome back to Rue's life. And it's actually a little bit cooler this morning, which is lovely. I'm certainly not complaining about the heat. Um, we've had some glorious days here, um, but it is nicer for the animals and also for getting any jobs done when it's a little bit cooler. So it's about 10 o'clock in the morning and I thought it was a perfect day to give you a farm tour because it's been a while since I did a farm tour. And also I thought, because often when I show you the plot, I don't think to come over and show you other elements of the garden, which is by the house rather than across at the plot. Um, I know some of you were interested in seeing how the sweet peas were getting on. So I'll get you a little bit closer, but you can see behind me this riot of calendula and the sweet peas are really romping away as well. So let's just get a little bit closer. You can see I put in quite a selection of sweet peas and I'm already starting to pick some and they smell delightful. You can see they're really starting to climb up the frame. You know, these ones are, oh goodness, they've not got much further to go before they reach the top. And we've still got lots, there's a few nettles I need to pull out in here, but there's still lots establishing themselves. So a couple more weeks and I think we're really going to have that amazing display right across that frame and wall. So while we're here, let's have a quick look at the hanging baskets. So the geraniums are now flowering. They look really pretty. I've got this one here on the left of the woodshed, the other one here on the right. And then if we just move around, a quick sneaky look at the um, herb bed. which is just thriving, if a little scruffy. And then the basket on the other corner, that one turned out to be a white geranium and it's absolutely delightful. So I'm just going to zoom in for you. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Not at all what I was expecting, but I'm really, really pleased with it. So while we are on this side and nearest to the chickens, let's go and have a little look at them. So you can see there, we've got three out. Um, we've got the remaining X battery, Red Hen, and two of the Old English Game. We've actually got some broodies at the moment. So I'm just gonna go and have a little look Hello, broody chickens. What are you doing? Off you go. I'll find some of the strawberries. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Come on. Come on. There we go. Goodness me. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Oh dear, dear. So this is one of the ones that's a little bit broody at the moment. Oh, she's a cross patch. So I just make sure that they're coming out every day to get some food, some exercise and some water. So it's really important to make sure that they're all checked every day and um, that they all, as I say, come out, get some food, get some water, get some exercise. And as you can see, they really like to hunker down and have a good dust bath, which is really good for their well-being. And while I might here, I might as well collect eggs. So we've got three at the moment. So next let's have a little look at the sheep. And we've now moved them into this front paddock, uh, which is where they spend a chunk of the summer. And you can actually see we've topped this field because um, it's very difficult um, on the farm to predict 
weather conditions and how we're going to do with grass grazing for all the animals. Um, some years we get it perfect, some years we just don't have enough grazing um, and some years we have it in abundance and this year it is one of those years. Um, so we've used the tractor, um, I'll put a little insert actually because that was only done recently of us topping. Uh, which is just um, a cut taking the tops off um, the grazing um, to make it a, a more manageable graze for whichever stock are in the field and it also helps with weed control so if there are any docks or thistles and um, it knocks the tops off before they get the chance to go to seed um, and therefore multiply so you can see the sheep are looking really well they certainly don't need feeding at the moment but what I will do is just hop across and check their water so obviously with all stock all year round it's important for them to have a good plentiful fresh supply of water but particularly during the hotter months so as you can see it's just a bucket and a standpipe in this paddock and I just make sure that I refresh that at least twice a day so let's leave the sheep to it and we'll go and have a look at the horses so we're just walking through this paddock and you can see that the little pen that we often use for the pony and this field and also the top field and then if we if we walked through that field the far field are all being rested at the moment so the far field which is the one that's on the really big slope which we tend to use for the sheep through the winter months um, and then the horses and sheep rotate around the rest of the paddocks but again that front paddock that the sheep are in which is the one you've just seen them in um, I don't use for the horses uh, for a number of factors but mainly just because it's so close to um, that main road and it worries me so it's just a case of uh, security and then the other field across that the sheep go in the one that's very sloping it's just a little bit too um, undulating and yeah it's great for the sheep but I wouldn't want to put the horses in there I prefer these flatter fields we've got a little bit of undulation on them but that sheep field really slopes down and I would worry about injury so you can probably just see the horses there in the distance so let's go and get a bit closer so there we can see little pony he's having a bit of a lie in this morning and here with Garth and fish keeping each other company and for those of you that aren't horsey you can see how they're standing nose to tail and that's a very natural way that they will stand at this time of the year so that if there's any flies they swish with their tails off each other's faces and I love this kind of mutual care they will groom each other they will stand like this as I say nose to tail to use each other's tails to keep the flies off each other's faces um, I've even known when these big boys are wearing rugs for the little pony to really back himself because he doesn't wear a rug because he gets a winter woolly coat but he backs himself right almost underneath them you know and they will kind of shelter him when uh, the weather is bad through the winter months hello Mr Garth coming home for your close-up <laughs> such a handsome boy so just to give you an idea the buckets are there in the this field which has also been topped um, there is an automatic water in the corner and then the standpipe is just here so I'll go and switch that off in a moment um, there are either taps or automatic waters in all of the paddocks that we have So 
I've just switched the hose pipe into the second bucket and then the time it takes me to walk across to the stand pipe and turn it off that one will also be full so let's just walk back towards the house Look at these beautiful foxgloves. Aren't they just stunning? So they're past their absolute best, but they're still just delightful. And although we, we aim to keep on top of the weeds on the farm, um, I do like to leave some areas so you can see under hedges and in some corners, we do like to leave it a bit wild because it's such a haven for wildlife and nature. And that's such an important part of my life. So you can see that's an elder there, which uh, has flowered and we should get some lovely elderberries. Um, and also in the hedgerows, if I just turn you around, um, we have um, elder, as I've already mentioned, but we've got more elder up on this row here. And we have hedgerows all around the farm. Uh, we have hazel which is near to the vegetable plot in a hedge there we have sloes we have hawthorn um, we have rose hips there is so much from these hedgerows that we can harvest and use which is fantastic and then in the chicken area we also have we tend to refer to it as our orchard we have some apple trees we have a pear tree and we have damson so as well as the produce that i can grow on the vegetable plot we also have an abundance from the trees and hedgerows so we've got an aeroplane going overhead <laughs> But here you can see the girls. So here we've got our beautiful greyhounds who, if you're a regular follower, you will have seen them popping up in many of my videos. And they're just chilling about in the garden this morning. Um, I say garden, you can see next to Kaylee there, there's actually a water trough. Um, and this was a sheep paddock um, before we moved in. So just again for any of you that may be new this may be your first farm tour and just standing at the moment in one of the paddocks that we're resting and just to give you some sort of orientation if you will that is the horses across where we've just come from and their field stretches all the way up across that way and then there's a field next to it <laughs> then we've got a field here that we, we often put the um, sheep in we don't graze the horses in it and I have an area that is mowed um, 20 meters by 40 meters we keep that as our um, schooling area for working the horses we have what we call the garden area here the stables are up there there we've got the beautiful oak tree and next to that the pear tree the chickens are just to the right so behind those sheds is where the chickens are and also the flower garden with the sweet peas and the calendula we have a barn which is an open-ended barn here which is a really useful space and you can just see our cottage behind that and then you can just see the back end of the shed and there's the polytunnel so that is where the vegetable plot is this is a sheep handling area this is the paddock that the sheep are in which just slopes down there towards the lane or the road then there is the little starvation pen which we use for um keeping pony in 
uh, when the grass is really lush so he's actually just spent a couple of weeks in there but the, he's eaten it right down so he's having some time out uh, with the big horses but when this uh, grass comes back up again and before he um, overindulges out there he will come back in here and um, we can always supplement the grazing with hay if necessary and then as I say there's the paddock up here another field that does need topping you can see there are some thistles and we need to catch those before they go to seed and then that slopes away into one more paddock um, as I say there's a gate at the edge and it drops away so we're, we're in 10 acres altogether which for a flock of chickens five Wiltshire horn ewes two horses a pony two greyhounds and myself and Chris is just perfect if you're enjoying this video and would like to see more click the like button subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified of all my latest videos so i really hope that you've enjoyed this video i know it's been a while since i did a farm tour so do let me know in the comments below if that's something you would like to see me bring back. I, use, I always do my plot tours monthly and I used to do a monthly farm tour, but I wasn't sure how much that would interest everybody, but I can certainly pop that back in monthly or quarterly or whatever. Um, so do drop me a comment below if it's something you're not interested in at all. Um, if it isn't, you probably haven't reached this far in the video. Um, but if it's something that you like to see, I'm more than happy to pop that back in um, you know, as a regular slot. So I'm away to make myself a cuppa. I hope you're all well. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I will see you all again soon.